Uh, welcome everybody to another episode of the ATX Metal Podcast. This is a informal, formal interview with the uh, creators of the A and R Foundation. And we are here to help promote and get out the information uh, that they think is pertinent to the music industry, whether it's metal, country, any genre. Um, and I'm just going to let you guys explain it. I'm just going to be over here absorbing it. And you guys can talk as long or as short as you want to. So uh, we'll start off with uh, James over here. Introduce yourself, where you're from, and uh, your relationship to the A&R Foundation. And then we'll just go from there. Sounds great. Uh, my name is James Gonzalez. Uh, I live here in Austin, Texas, um, from kind of all over in South Texas. But uh, I'm, I'm honored to be one of the founding board members of the A&R Foundation. Uh, I was invited on by, by Rob and, and Austin. We've got a longstanding relationship in, in kind of like supporting independent music as uh, organizers and stuff like that. So Nice. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming. Nice thanks to for have having you. us. Hey, uh, Rob Austin here and uh, from San Jose, California, been in the Austin, Texas area for the past eight years now and uh, program director for the a &R Foundation uh, and uh, just excited to be here where we can help make a positive impact on the local community. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Austin Breckenridge, uh, born and raised in San Jose, California, but uh, been in Texas here for, gosh, going on 12 years now. Um, I am the executive director for the a &R Foundation, so um, I primarily see the day-to-day -day operations along with uh, Rob and report to James to let him know we're, we're doing good things and on time. So, so, so James is like, you, uh, like the president or no, I, mean, no, no. I, I, help, I don't understand the structure mm. of a nonprofit organization that okay. helps musicians and artists. So I guess let's start with what your role is. And how it, I guess, impacts the artists or, or, or you sure. know what I'm trying to say. So, so my role as uh, just as a board member. Um, okay, not, board member. Got yeah. It. So uh, I'm, it's basically uh, I represent um, everyone else's interest, right? And it's just to make sure that we hold these guys accountable. Uh, so, like, uh, since these guys do the day to day work, we're there to chat. You know, there's there's several of us. They're there to offer some expertise, but also. A lot of oversight and so it's just like making sure that if they're spending you know donated money that they do it appropriately that we're going through all the motions formally and it's just a kind of a yeah, it's like a system it's of check, like and, check balance. and balance yeah, okay absolutely gotcha yeah. gotcha mm -hmm. robert what about you uh so as program director it's my responsibility to make sure that our programs are successful you know making sure that we're measuring the performance of them making sure that everyone who's in the programs is getting the right content uh, the content is sticking that they can it's something they can use right gotcha um and that's my entire focus what about you? Yeah, so mine is as the of, executive director. As the executive okay. director, yeah. So it's it's overseeing the day to day operations as a whole, but also being a uh, liaison between you know Robert and myself and our our communications director Jeremy uh, and the board, and then vice versa. So I work hand in hand with our board. We've got eight total members, so James being one of them, um, and we meet you know right now we meet monthly to kind of go over what we're wanting to work on and what we're wanting to execute. And then I take that back and get with Robert and Jeremy to figure out how we execute that plan over, you know, right now the month. Um, and then from there kind of report back on what we're doing. And so okay. it is a system of checks and balances. You know, the, the three of us work in the day to day and, and want to do as much good as we can. Uh, but we're also being a, a nonprofit, a 501 C three, we are accountable to the public and where we get our funds from and how we use them. And the board's there to be that separate kind of governing body to make I sure gotcha. that we're we're doing what we say we're going to do at okay. the end of the day. Now, do you guys work with other nonprofits in the music industry? So we're starting to. Okay, uh, we are brand new. Uh, we say brand new, but we've been we've been building for almost two years now. But wow, uh, as dude. far as getting into the um, fast the market with everyone, so we've had a lot of meetings with a lot of the creative nonprofits, and, and there's a lot of excitement about trying to work together. Um, and so we're just, we're excited to plug into that ecosystem. I think, you know, we're definitely not here to do something different in the way of competition as much as to, we found a gap that we think exists in this ecosystem and, mm -hmm. uh, we think we can fill it and we think we can, you know, make it a little bit stronger with, okay. with what we're trying Who, to do. Who's, 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 uh, whose brainchild was this? How did it start? <laughs> I like the way Austin tells the story. <laughs> uh, I'll elaborate if, if there's some room after, but he's got a good story. Uh, it, 
technically speaking, the, the, the nonprofit side of it, it, a lot of it started with, with Robert and it was, it was over sushi lunch one day. Uh, I love sushi. And uh, so do we love sushi. So do we. Had some yesterday. I feel like we keep that place <laughs> afloat just between the few of us. Uh, <laughs> but we, uh, we had a, a, a for-profit version of this uh, for a number of years and it, it offered both creative services. So as far as uh, like lyric videos and um, graphic design and things of that nature, but we also offered business consultation to speak to the business side of the, the industry. And um, we found that while it was being utilized, it, it wasn't as heavily utilized recurring as, as the media services, which we, we kind of knew was going to be the case, you know, if given the choice as creatives, we, we want to go with the fun stuff. Um, but when we, we cycled back with those people, we had asked if there was no real value in it, or if it was just a matter of, we only had so much money and we, we want to go towards the fun stuff. And it, it was the latter. It was no, the, we know this is great for us. We love the advice and we'd love to utilize it, but I got a hundred bucks. I'm going to tell you where I'm going to spend it. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and so that kind of led the idea of Robert going, well, how do we, now it's just a financial barrier, right? At the end of the day, it's not a quality of service. It's not, you know, understanding if it was needed or not. And he said, well, what if we went nonprofit? And, and I'll be honest, I about laughed him out of that sushi restaurant. Uh, <laughs> and so did, so did our communications director, Jeremy. And so that I, we've never seen a model like that in the nonprofit world. It exists for like the creative aspects. There's a ton, you know, Austin music foundation, Sims, uh, those places that fill these different holes and gaps for the creative aspects of what musicians do, but coming at it from a, a business perspective, um, I honestly didn't think we could qualify it as a nonprofit, to, to be honest with you. And so we spent a few months kind of going back and forth with it and engaging a nonprofit attorney and basically sitting down going, hey, man, are we nuts? And he goes, well, you're not crazy, but <laughs> it's different. You I, mean, know? Do, I mean, obviously, so, you guys enjoy it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean... How, how, I guess, when did it start? I, unless I missed that, like what year? So, um, well, the nonprofit yeah. itself launched officially, what, April of this year? Last year. Yep. And, oh, so and it's, it, I mean, it's not even launch, launch really, because we're not doing business yet. We're going to have a launch you. event, which is coming up soon at Come and Take It Live. But if you really want to know how long we've been consulting people and helping them accomplish their goals in the music industry, 15 years. I mean, you know, wow. each, uh, you know, and so it's, it all started there. Um, I don't know if you want to dive into the history, but just kind of how this all happened. Uh, yeah, just I mean, a, just a brief overview. Sure. I know you guys have some other questions you want to get to to get it going, but yeah, yeah I, no I was. I mean, shit, we could do this for a while. But yeah. <laughs> careful giving us that option. Yeah, we, we, we yeah, got to. We got We like to talk. This place closes in twelve hours, so I think we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I'm the, the mommies and the memes are going to start hitting oh, here yeah. in just a little bit. So fortunately. Fortunately, we have access to, you know, we can see everybody coming in and, you know, you know, with Robert working here, you know, and me also working here, you know, and just being a patron, I understand that in about an hour, it's going to get a little, a little silly. But, oh, yeah. uh, but anyway, sorry, sorry to, I, I digress. Uh, but yeah, brief no bio. Brief bio. Uh, yeah. So um, as far as, you know, my position in this whole thing is uh, it all started, what, what, 16 years, 6,000 days ago at this point. Uh, where I was a performing musician in San Jose, California, and my entire focus was finding ways to scale that business, right? Trying to get more people through the door, trying to get more merch sales. And we as an artist, as an artist. So you were already thinking about like, I'm, I'm, I'm honing my craft. Yes. But like you were already like big picture instead of trying to yeah. get gigs, you were like, well, I need to get people through the door and buying the shirt so that I can continue my journey. Yeah funded through the people essentially totally. you know as as a teenager doing music back then my whole idea was i wanted to be like the dudes on tv like how of do course. i get onto that big stage yeah. you know how do i get on the radio how do i do all that and that was a lot of where i was trying to go and austin was one of the very few promoters that paid us fairly that actually took care of us and consistently did the right thing um you know so shortly after we worked together doing festivals uh, in our area we ended up doing a, we ran a record label together, uh, independent record label. And that was, uh, we're going to name drop. I don't know if you want to cut it out or keep it in, but, uh, yeah. So Nemesis Media, Nemesis Records prior to that, prior to that it was Pitch Black Records. Okay. Uh, that's when I met him and, uh, you know, he was booking Sunday Night Metal and, uh, again, the, one of the few promoters that took care of us properly. And so tons of respect from the beginning, figured this is going to be a good thing. We spent the past 15 years running the independent record label, managing bands, tour production, uh, you know, artist management, doing a lot and uh, learned a lot. And so it's been really cool just getting to this point because, I mean, truth be told, we tried to get out of the business like how many years ago? About 
four or five. Four or five. Yeah. You know, both of us just like, ah, I think, I think we've done a lot. It's been a decade. It's been fun. Uh, let's just, you know, he's focusing on his family, et cetera. But people kept coming up and asking questions. Hey, I've got a, an album that I want to release. Hey, I've got a single I want to put out. Hey, I want to go on tour. Hey, I want to do merchandise. Can you guys help me put a strategy together? Because I don't know what the hell I'm doing, which is most, most people, right? right? You're not taught this stuff. You got to figure it out. It sucks. It's hard. Um, and just finally, I think you probably came to me and was like, you know what? I know we're, we're trying to get out of this thing, but I, I'm still getting asked for us to meet with folks. By the way, you, you're busy next Saturday. We're going to meet with somebody, but do you want to start getting back into this? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm not performing these days, but I still love music. I still love helping musicians. Um, it's one of those things where I think it's like that natural progression, right? You know, where when you've you've done the performance aspect for a while, um, you learn a lot. And if you're able to share those experiences with people, I think it's very valuable because I've had pitfalls. I've made mistakes. Um, oh and- man, <laughs> the, the amount the amount of as simple of a, of a setup as this is, if you don't know what you're looking at or what you're plugging in or how you're coordinating it, you have no clue. I mean, this obviously took, I'm, I'm going into, I'm going into my ninth year and wow. you know, we picked this up in 2018 uh, and then COVID hit. So we put all the, you know, camera equipment away and, you know, shows went away, but then shows came back, but mm. I wasn't in a position to where I could go live stream anymore because I sold some equipment and, you know, life happens, so on and yeah. so forth. Uh, but yeah, to your point, man, I've, I've had people from the local community ask me questions about, you know, more on the promotion and, and, you know, getting the message out there. And that's why I still do this to this day. Um, obviously not for a profit. I do this for the love of the, of the scene and, and, you know, to meet people like you guys that are actually genuinely helping the, not only the younger bands, but even some of the bands that have been around for three, four, five years. Like oh, we yeah. were having a conversation earlier and he was talking about Casca to Cassandra. Yeah. And if for those listening and watching, if you don't know who that band is, that was like one of the like mid, mid 20 teen bands that I first was introduced to at Dirty Dog Bar. Yes. And uh, I, I have a, sh- I, I would remember wearing the shirt and people were like, yo, you got one of those shirts? I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those were good days, man. Yeah, That's fun. Like, I'm dating myself, but yeah. it just goes to show that even though bands come and go, there are still people like you guys, like James, you know, running the Texas Metal Collective and throwing shows at any brewing and myself just having people over and or Zoom calls talking to them about their music. So I really think that, you know, people like us running in the background, you know, we're a part of the glue, but mm-hmm. without the musicians, talent and passion mm. what would we be doing probably having a podcast about coffee or something <laughs> tacos <laughs> or something yeah. yeah austin said this plenty of times yeah. you know the artist is the center of the entire ecosystem here 100%. without the artist none of this exists 100 percent. and um you know just just to get kind of intense about it we want to shift that paradigm you know we want to make it to where people respect the artist more because people look at it and go, Oh yeah, we can, we can book whoever at this bar. We might pay him a little bit and we'll just kind of put oh, whoever through the door. And that sucks. It it's does. not fair. Um, it's if we can help folks start to respect the artist, pay them more, pay them better consistently, teach folks more of the business side of things so they can run their business and, and, and make a living off of it. Awesome. We're, we're achieving our goals here. That's what we want to do. Uh, but at the moment, the paradigm is, yeah, it's fine. You could play. Who's here next week? Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, it, it's a struggle for me stale. because, you know, just like James, I, you know, I book shows, I book, I book one show a year mm-hmm. at the end of, at the end of the year at come and take it live, uh, my sponsor. And I put on a showcase and this year's showcase is going to be off the charts nuts. I've got some big names locked in, ready to go. I've got seven locals, two from Houston, but whenever we had another package add on, I'm like, well, that's going to take away from the locals. Ah, you know, like yep. I, that, that's my focus is I want to be able to hand, you know, more than $20 in a case of beer. I mean, which yeah. some bands are like, hell yeah. Sure. You know, like that's cool. <laughs> sure. But then other bands will tell me straight up, like we're not stepping on stage for less than 200 yeah. and rightfully Good. so. Yeah. I mean, with the amount of gear that they've got, the years of experience and mm-hmm. practicing and just, pouring themselves into their art and then here we are as promoters or 
or people that want to help, they're like kind of hamstrung guys. I only got 50 bucks, you know? And that's the paradigm that I think we're trying to shift here, right? Is try to make it more of a standard at some point. Yeah. Standardize the, to just take care of the artist yeah. because the artist is the center of the ecosystem. People don't think of it that way. That's the issue. The bar is the center of the ecosystem, the book or the promoter. Great people. I'm glad they're there. We need them too. But again, without the artist, none of them, none, none of, of them, them exist. There's, yeah. there's no point. Right. And I, I think to, to your point, it's going beyond the setting the standard of, you know, yeah, let's get, you know, let's give them 500 bucks. Right. But more importantly, like knowing what to do with that $500 is that, that next huge. piece. Bingo. And that's, that's, that's what's missing quite honestly, because, you know, especially in any creative art, music, you know, film, all of it, it it's dirty to think of yourself as a business. Right. But it's more recently, it's been more talked about, but for the longest time it was, ah, you're selling out. Well, no selling out what to put food on your table. Is that selling out or yeah. is that taking care of yourself and your obligations? Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think society in general doesn't value art the way it values tech and anything else. Right. You talk to most people, the, the conversations I've seen, someone says, well, what do you do? Well, I, I play music. Cool. But what's your day job? Like, yeah. what do you, what, what else do you do? do? Yeah, right? like, like how, how, how sad uh, is that, that that's someone's immediate, because we don't consider it on the same level as a tech. Right. And mm -hmm. so, but if you, if you work for venture capital or you're, you're employee number two at Facebook, like it's the greatest thing in the world. Right. And I was like, all those companies use music mm -hmm. at their parties and their ads on the radio. Like think about how boring life would be without music. Right. Oh my God. That, that, that's the power I think that that artists have that musicians have that they don't realize they have mm -hmm. uh, because it's been beaten out of them for a hundred years that it's, it makes money. Everyone thinks music doesn't make money. It's several billion dollar industry. It's just everybody, oh, yeah. but the people creating it is getting a piece of the pie. Right. Oh, and so yeah. trying it, it, to shift that a little bit and, and let people know that, Hey, as you start making money, like here's how you can use it more strategically so that you can take this out as long as you possibly want it. And if that's weekend gigs, because that's what you want to do and you want to be home during the week with your wife and kids, that's awesome. But I want to make sure that those weekends are, are valuable for you. Right? right. And that you're not losing money that you need to put your kid through school mm -hmm. because of, you know, the creative passion that you have, let's find a way to monetize that and, and make it work for you. If you want it to get big time. Cool. You want to do that independently? Awesome. You want to sign your label? Great. I just want you to have enough knowledge to be empowered, to know what you're getting yourself into to make it so that if you know you don't want to tour when you're 85 years old that you don't absolutely have to because everybody else is getting a piece of your pie and you got you know one pepperoni out of the whole pizza yeah that's made on your back right so I prefer the crust yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> man that's well cool that's uh man that's i think that's really great that you guys are not only trying to set the set the standard raise the bar but also help the bands understand, okay, yeah, you just got paid a thousand dollars for this gig and you've got four members. So it's $250 a member, or you take 10% of that and put it over here and you take 10% of that and you put it over here. And then you're in charge of this and you're in charge of that. And we'll shop this. Is that kind of the mindset? hundred percent, right? It's, it's things like that. It's, you know, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, 200 some odd dollars per member. Right. But also like you're forgetting uncle Sam gets his cut. Right. So let's set aside yep. that because mm -hmm. as you start making more money and you start getting on their radar, it's going to cost you that. Um, the other piece is how much is going into your merchandise. I think, you know, uh, talking about pricing, I, most crazy thing. Anytime I ask musicians is why is your t-shirt $15? And they go, well, it seemed like a good number. Is it, that's it. Well, everyone else is selling it for right, but what did it cost you? Right. Right. Did you set aside enough to pay that back? Did you set aside the sales tax? Well, what do you mean sales tax? Well, just because they haven't come knocking yet doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen. You're just right. you're not making enough for them to pay attention to you yet, but it, it will happen. Mm -hmm. The state's gonna get theirs, the IRS is gonna get theirs. The sooner we can accept that and set it aside and understand that there's even value in setting that aside because you you can write that off and technically get some of that sucker back. But um you know, getting into detail on those type of things as well is that like on your $15 t-shirt, it might cost you five bucks to make that t-shirt. Five dollars should probably go into some sort of savings to split between taxes and my oh crap fund because the van will break down. <laughs> the van it's always, always breaks down. The van will break down. Right. That's actually my new t-shirt. Yeah. The van <laughs> oh will break God. down. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Dude, yeah, the I van can just, always breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> and 
in the next five bucks it goes, you know, you split it, right? You get that 250 of it's probably going to be profit, which isn't a whole lot per person. And then 250 is going to go into the fact that you're going to need gas and that some, unfortunately, some promoter along the way is not going to pay you. Right? right. And so taking into account that that $15 is already, it's allocated everywhere. Right. So on $15, we're talking about splitting $2 and 50 cents between four or four five people. people. Like, no, it's not profitable in that one scenario, but it's keeping your operations going and it's not causing you to have to put more money into it than you already have right I got you. and that's a tough way to think for most creative people anybody i'm not going to say creative people but especially the creative mind it doesn't want to think about that it wants to go oh, that t-shirt looks cool right yeah. like it's oh, it's yeah. got eight colors it's full print like okay but it, it cost you nine bucks to make that shirt yes, are, you gonna, uh, are you still going to price it at 15 if it costs you almost that to print it that, that's not the right strategy right so kind of trying to get people there um and understand that there's an inherent advantage to thinking that way, right? If you want to keep doing this sustainably. Just trying just trying to break the mindset <clears throat> up of it's not we're just playing, we're gig into gig. It's if you are serious about making this a business, whether or not you go to the top of the charts on a West or East Coast run or become popular in some other country, it's more or less, do you want to do this the right way? And mm-hmm. this is how you do it. Am I, is that pretty much absolutely and the nutshell? I, I think the, it's really cool that you mentioned it exactly as you did because it is the artist's choice, right? right. If you want a gig just to gig, cool. Respect. That's amazing. It takes a lot to do that. It, but if yes. you, if you, it, it, right? But if you actually want to make this a sustainable career, if you actually want to make a living off of this, if you want to feed your kids, pay your bills, et cetera, it takes a business mindset really is what it is. And, and that's a lot of what we're trying to get folks to, to realize. And Cause didn't, and I mean, I don't mean to cut you off, but no, didn't, no. didn't South by just up their pricing because of, okay. Cause I, yeah, I heard, so, I was listening to like NPR and they were saying that now the payouts that used to be like two and 300 are now like five and 700, hmm. which is mind boggling to yeah. me, but a handful of artists, especially some of the like, more local bands that gig to gig, like when mm-hmm. South by or ACL comes through, I mean, they're, they're cleaning up because they're not only playing at come and take it. They're playing at Mohawk and Valhalla and Stubbs and, you know, all these other, uh, you know, far out lounge. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, you could really rack up a lot of future money on, on just a week's worth of your time. Mm-hmm. And of course you have to think about, you know, do they have a day job? Are they, are they grinding from 6 a.m. to midnight? And, you know, like I, I have a lot of a lot of respect for musicians and the fact that they're out there just hustling just to hustle to get their music out. But then, mm-hmm. you know, they land all this money and then what do they do with it? Right. So so I guess I guess what does A&R stand for? As in, well. That could be seen two different ways. There's a two different way to answer it as well. So sure, go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what what is what? Yeah, what does it mean and what does it stand for? Uh, so I'll say the funny one, yeah. and, and I'll let you do the formal <laughs> one. Uh, the funny one because it's just a little inside joke. Austin and Robert A and R A and R A and R Austin and Robert. Yeah, because it's us. That's, yep. We've been a duo for a long time, uh, helping people. Uh, but but the proper one has a long story as well. Yeah. So you know the the proper way, I guess, of going about it would be, you know, A&R standing for artist and repertoire, right? Okay. It was a, a division of a record label and still is in some cases where they were responsible for scouting the talent and, and initially signing the talent, usually to a demo agreement. So they developed them before the label put a ton of money behind them, put them on tour and helped them develop everything. From- so it's the, like the sub, not category, but but it's, it's just one of the tentacles, yep. but mm-hmm. before they make, before they make that jump. Yep. It's like they the want to make sure that they know what the hell they're doing right before they make that and that and that they're commercially viable Let, let's call it what it that's what the label's there to make money right yeah. and so in order to do that they need to have the sound the look the ability to travel all that stuff and so a and r managers really kind of helped guide that aspect of an artist's career and then you know the, the shift that's happened over the last 10 15 years you know within the music industry um you know they it's not viable for most labels to pay someone you know 50 to 80 grand a year to, to go scout do that yeah. and scout and i mean they're still there but they scout online they scout via spotify they look at plays they look at youtube they look at their you know a lot of them aren't just sitting in the Which clubs TikTok anymore. video has four billion right views. exactly yeah. it's it's so the metrics have changed on what the label's looking at but the the labels want you to already have that 
you need to have a million followers. You need to have, you know, and in our mindset anyway, everyone looks at this a little differently is if you as an artist have already built that, why are you going to give that up? You already did the work, right? right? Um, it, but the art of artist and repertoire, I think, is kind of lost. It's it's not what it used to be. That true, like, we're here to help develop you into something that's that's marketable, that can make money, that, you know, if you put some, pump some cash into you, that you're going to be able to exponentially grow that, and there's going to be inherent benefit for everyone. Um, we take some of that mindset, but it's more about being able to to set the strongest foundation for yourself, and that you again have a lot more value and negotiating power than you think as an independent artist, especially if you're doing that work. But also if you need some help trying to figure that out, like we want to be able to do that and help you get there. And then whatever decision you choose to make, uh, kind of like Robert was saying, we're, we're not here to say go independent or go label. I think both have their merits depending on what your goals are. Right. What's missing is most people don't know what their goals are. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that a little bit, right? Okay, like, yeah. Let's have that conversation first. What are your goals? And then let's plan how you're going to reach those goals. If it's major label, if it's indie label, here's how you pitch yourself. And this is what they're going to want to see. If you want to do this independently, here's what you're giving up. And here's what you're keeping as opposed to going this route. And let's talk about a plan to get you that way. And so that that's the area we're hoping to fill. So in terms, since you guys are a nonprofit, you obviously work off of, uh, off of donations. Um, I guess, how do you get those donations? Who do you get them from? And how does it benefit the artists that you guys are trying to develop and coach? I sent Anybody Robert <laughs> out to a street corner with a sign. <laughs> Just I shake the sign. I spin he, it. He, he spins, spins it really well. well. <laughs> I've learned how to do really cool tricks. Uh, James, uh, James, James is out of indie brewing. Yeah. Just. I have alms for the poor. Yeah. And he like holds up a beer behind we, it. Like this is where I ask go. you, Ryan, for <laughs> some can. cash. We, if you we, can help me. We help pull me straws and whoever has the shortest one goes out in the bikini that day. Uh <laughs> please cut that. I would, do, I would I would donate. I would donate to see that. <laughs> well, or to not. Uh, that's how either we way. Yeah. We'll take money for either jokes. <laughs> so yeah, so so yeah. so yeah. So where's the money come sure. from? Who do you get it? And or who do you get it from and what do you do yeah. with it? Actually, r real quick, yeah. I, before we even answer that question, I think we just skimmed over the fact that uh, because we all know this, but we haven't talked about it, um, is that this, th this costs nothing mm -hmm. to the participant. Yeah. Right. So if you enroll in the program. Oh, to, you to know, the artist. Yeah. Right. Ah, right. So, okay. So, so the, wow. Okay. No. So the, these are free services, right? And I think that may be something we kind of skimmed over. Is it like the purpose of the foundation is to provide these tools uh, and access to resources and education and help you make educated decisions so that you can be sustainable at whatever level, right? So if you want to be, uh, I, I just want to support my own hobby and my artistic venture and it should pay for itself, right? So that, you know, to Austin's point, you're not having to like invest more of your own personal money if you can put any, any earnings towards Got it. at least sustaining that, right? But so there's different levels of help that we can offer, but it is at zero cost to the musician, right? So if you enroll, it's not going to come out of your pocket. But obviously, these things do cost money. So it is donor funded. Um, and, and I'll let Austin talk more about like our strategy for that. But I just kind of wanted to point that out because I don't know that we'd said it yet in the, in the conversation. We, we had kind of talked about it uh, in the story of how we went from for profit to nonprofit, right? right? But it was such a small piece. So I'm glad you elaborated. Yeah, thank you for that, James. Thanks, James. Um, yeah, that's the whole thing, right? Is just the idea that if you let an artist have to make a decision where they get a thousand bucks and it's like, do you want a brand new music video or do you want to go take a course on branding? Right. You know, uh, I mean, I think everyone here First would naturally music say video. music video, right? Yeah. yeah. That's that, that's the easy natural thought. And it's not because the coursework to teach you that business stuff like branding is not important. It's just the artist wants the art, right? Right. The artist wants the art. That's what they know. That's, that's what's natural. Um, so not only was it where if we're facing that type of decision, the curriculum or the teaching is bypassed or, or not looked at as important, um, but at the same time, it does cost money, right? You know, I mean, we've, we've got stuff to do. We're adults now. We're not able to slum on a couch and, and kind of just make it by like we've, we've got bills, you know, like it's, <laughs> it's different, man. You know, yeah. when you're in your 30s, it's, it's a whole different world. Um, and so the idea is, OK, how the heck do we make this available for artists where Obviously, we talk to people. They want to do it. They want to talk with us. They want to ask questions. They want to put strategies together. They want to execute plans. They want to follow up. We want to celebrate those milestones with them. It's great. Um, but again, if they don't have the money to pay for it in a for-profit setting, 
then let's just remove the money. That's it. Sign up and go do it. And that's, that's where this whole idea came from. It's just, let's make it to where we can take funding from somewhere else, like a donation or, or get something, some sort of grant from the government. Uh, there's, or bikini car washes. Or bikini car washes. I mean, there's, there's plenty of things that you can do to, <laughs> to get donations. Uh, that's I'm bringing stick. that one up at the next board meeting, yeah, James. That's, that's, that's going to stick around forever. I'm going to put that as a resolution. <laughs> All in favor? The motion but, carries. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's the main thing, right? It's just re- eliminating that barrier to entry, right? Making it to where, obviously, people know it's important to get educated on how to do stuff. Right. Right. Uh, that's why YouTube is so big. People love to learn, you know, uh, masterclass is huge because people like to learn. Uh, and that's in addition to formal education. So how do we make something accessible that's valuable to this specific group of people that we love to be around, that we love to support, that we've been supporting for the past 15 years? You know, how do we keep it going? And and that's where everything James talked about is, is really the crux of what we're doing here. Gotcha. Yeah, I think you said really one key word that's it's accessible. Right. Um, it, it, we're not claiming that education isn't out there, but it's typically behind a financial barrier. Right. And, yeah. and you can see with all these conferences, you know, you go as an artist, you go and you get really jazzed up and you get a lot of this free advice and then you go and you get that free workbook or whatever it is. But then there's OK for fifty nine ninety nine a month or, you know, you three go, easy yeah. payments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. You know, and, and you can spread that out on PayPal now into four interest free payments. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and so. Um, or you get the music schools, you get something like a full sale university where you go and get a degree, but that degree is still going to cost you thirty, forty thousand dollars and your likelihood of getting in even entry level and, and even making that a year in some cases, most music careers start as internships unpaid, yep. but you've got this $50,000 degree that you paid for in music. It's tough to get there and it's tough to justify it. Right. So it, not that it's not there, but it's not very accessible and it's usually behind a financial barrier. And so making it accessible, removing that financial barrier and saying, Hey, what you're telling us is that it was just the money in the way. We've taken that away. Now it's on you to put boots to the ground and come and come do this. And we're here to help you and we're here to help you hand in hand. Um, but back back to your question about the sourcing of the funds, uh, you know, public private donation, right? So we are a, a full 501c3 public charity. We, we have that status. We're allowed to source it from any public source or private source um, grants through, you know, city and local governments, uh, and then sponsorships, you know, with corporate partners and things like that. And so there's a lot that goes on on the back end of this, you know, fundraising is a constant effort for us because we don't get it in a traditional, we we don't want to charge for those services. Right. right? And so in order to sustain that, we gotta, we gotta find it wherever we can. And so, um, you know, and how it supports is, is, Everyone thinks there has to be this minimum dollar amount. I'm going to tell you right now, like 10 bucks goes a long way, yep. right? 10 bucks can, can easily result in an hour session with someone where they leave with a business plan that if they execute it the right way and everything pans out like, like you hope it does, can go on to make millions of dollars. And that's an extreme scenario and it's not going to happen for everybody, but right. it, that's how powerful something like a business plan is. Mm-hmm. And 10, 20, $30 here and there helps get us in front of many of those people and give them the best opportunity possible. So. Um, yeah. Thanks. So if I don't, what if I don't have any money to, to, to donate or like, I guess, I mean, obviously I've been doing this at a net loss for day one, yeah. which is I'm 1000% okay with everybody. Cool. Um, I would like a little money, but anyway, <laughs> 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 but no, no, no. Uh, all jokes aside, like I've, I've been donating my time simply because I just love doing this. I love talking with people. I love the inner, the interactions, the stories, you know, get to really learn the artists and, and, you know, hell me and James really didn't know each other for the longest time. And then next thing you know, he's throwing shows at Indy and I'm over there filming and, you know, we've just, we've, we've cultivated our friendship through music. Yeah. And like you guys were saying earlier, without music, like right now, we wouldn't be here right now. Like there's no background music, but the minute that it hits, now the bar becomes alive. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the room is now filled with, with, Ooh, okay. And it's not just people staring at each other awkwardly <laughs> trying to uh-huh. figure out what to say. <laughs> but, um, if I don't have any money to give you guys, how, how, how could I as an individual or someone that's going to hear or see this donate something or give time or how's that work or could, does it work? It, it does. And it, it's one of my favorite questions. Um, I, I don't think I know a single person in my life that doesn't know someone that plays music. So first it's and true. foremost, mm-hmm. that person that wants to do music that, you know, point them to the resource. That's how you can help. Number one, 
you know, us being able to show that this is a service people want to use is, is a really key factor in us being able to secure grant funding, especially at a government level, right? It, it, the money's there. It is there. How it's distributed is based on how many people we're able to serve effectively, right? And so the effectively part's on us, right? Getting people in the door, we can use help with that. And obviously we're out there marketing and talking to people about what we do, but you making that recommendation as an individual to your friend versus Rob or I, who they may or may not know yet saying, Hey, we got this thing that's free. And I know that sounds sketchy because we're in music and <laughs> nothing's free. free? It, it means a lot more coming from you, right? There's that bit of credibility that helps us get there. And then it's on us to take that and, and further that. Uh, so I think that's number one. Um, two is, you know, we are working on putting more events on and things like that. And that always needs staffing and volunteers from help and work a door to coordinating and sending emails. And so uh, any volunteer based work that you're, you're willing to do uh, can help us out as well, but I can't think of much. Can you think of anything else? Uh, I, I mean, think, you know, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I just keep thinking of ways as we sit here that anybody could really do anything, you know, mm -hmm. like, so if, I think if you're, if you're listening this far, if you're still waiting on the answer to this question, then you're, you're already interested in supporting independent music right Hell, because if you're still either, listening thank you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if if you know if if it's I, I like music because i like music and if you're willing to be like i, I want to do something to help sustain this this thing that we all enjoy right like we mm -hmm. all know it started somewhere um so simply like to austin's point you know sharing sharing uh our link you know which is the anrfoundation.org so I'll let you guys spell that out. But anyway, so if you look up the ANR foundation.org or, and, and uh, you look at something, tell somebody about us, right? So that's huge. Mm -hmm. But if you're a business, if you have a service, donations mm -hmm. in kind, right? So like, if you're like, Hey, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. I'd like to support you in some way. I don't have like monetary value, but yeah, you could be an individual that comes volunteer, like be a showrunner for one of our fundraisers, or mm -hmm. maybe be on a street team that can help us put, put things out share our social media posts, you know, like go have that conversation, ask the questions, just reach out, learn more. Yeah. And that's the first thing, right? So the more, the, the more we become a part of a conversation and a regular, um, yeah, just a regular topic and, and, and a resource that people know exists, you know, like, um, I, I think that this is all coming from a place of just our own passion for supporting independent art, uh, and, and wanting to do it right. Uh, and, and it is kind of like a bootstraps thing, you know, like these guys just decided that they wanted to do it and they were like, fuck it, we're going to do this. Right. And so everyone has done their part to help so far in some way, shape or form. That's, that's been supportive along the way. But I mean, if you're a musician and you love the cause, hit us up, let's talk about maybe putting a show together. Like maybe you can, we can do a feature with each other. So I mean, like, I don't know, man, if you want to donate sandwiches to the office, Cool. You know, like shit, that's like, not, no, I'm just kidding. You I'm don't, like there's no office to like, <laughs> to go, don't, don't you turn know. down free sandwiches. But, uh, okay, just, I'm you know, if you're a t-shirt uh, printer, you know, and you're like, Hey man, I want to, I want to help you guys out with, uh, with some merchandising or something along those lines. Like hell, if you run a company that has, uh, a division, you know, I mean, I know that that involves money, but man, tell your boss about us, mm -hmm. you know, like if you're like, Hey, are you guys looking for a charity to donate to next year? Yeah, because I mean, tell, all know. companies, big and small, probably need to throw some cash away at the end of the year to, you know, write off as a charitable donation. Mm -hmm. And so why not pump it back into your local community? Because I right. mean, I, there's the reason that I put this on the wristband is support local music. I mean, it reminds me, I don't need reminded every day that the music that I consume on Spotify for $9.99 a month or whatever it's up to now, $12.99 for the premium ad free version. Mm -hmm. But I just know that if, if the support's not there from at the ground level, you could, you could throw money at the wall all day and it's not really going to make any impact. So what I've, what I'm gathering is that you guys are really trying to make those dollars go as far as possible. Oh yeah. So that the artists that you guys represent work with coach that they actually have that value built into that two dollars and fifty cents mm -hmm. so they're not thinking like man this is just a waste you know but um but man so okay well, speaking of coaching can do you guys have like positions available i mean like how does that work because i mean how many how many people again are in the whole nonprofit? So the, there are only three of us right now that work in the day to day. Um, and okay. so we've, we've got 11 people total. If you count our board, plus the people in the day to day, 
Uh, our board positions or volunteer positions, those are folks, they don't get paid either. They're donating right. their time to help us build this thing from the ground up. It's like the HOA. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we like them a lot more than the HOA. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, yeah, so we, we, we are very early stage. So the intention is to open up positions. So at the moment, not right now, but you know, we hope that this thing catches on enough to where capacity does become an issue. I know most mm -hmm. people don't like to have capacity issues, but for us, that means we're succeeding. Right. right. And so um, ultimately it's, it's reaching out and having a conversation and, and looking for folks that have a nice blended experience in, you know, entrepreneurship of some sort and in, in music business, because that's what we're blending here. And then I think at the core, and we haven't quite mentioned it yet either, but we're, we're teaching musicians entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Y'all are entrepreneurs. Yep. We, we may not want to to call ourselves that, but that that's what we all are. And, and so yeah, having someone that's got that background, you know, with the music background, because creative entrepreneurship is, is just a, well, a lot of bit different to be honest with you, but um, you know, reaching out and letting us know that you're interested and, and as things start to open up, it, it may start coming in as an intern. It may starting, you know, as a volunteer um, until we can kind of grow our capacity and make sure. What about, what about the guys and gals that, already do coaching or teaching out of their storage locker like first mm. person that comes to mind just because i'm so in love with his drum work is uh cameron carbone uh formerly of alter mind and now he's he moved he had a whole setup in uh a storage locker mm -hmm. and now him and i believe uh his real good friend clay from polyphia the drummer they're in dallas and i mean they are teaching left and right. They have a space. Like I am so jealous of their space. It's, it's so gorgeous, but not that you have to be on that level to help somebody. So are mm -hmm. you guys saying that just anybody in the music industry scene can, can just approach you guys and just ask? Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody should feel like they can't ask. Okay. Um, yeah. Cause I don't want it, to feel like this, like, Oh, I'm not going to talk to those guys. No, no. I, I, Hey man, I, I, I want to talk to everybody. You know, I, I think everyone has a way they can help that's unique to them. And it just depends on their set of circumstances, their history. They may have taken my path or James's path or his or yours or, or anybody who's watching and listening to this. And I think that's really critical to the success of the community that we're looking to build here. Um, Austin is a fantastic city with tons of talent and there's a lot tons. of really cool support here for it. Two things that we've discovered recently while building this thing out is one, a lot of artists don't know about the support that exists here. So you have a lot of untapped resources, uh, monetary resources, health resources, affordable housing, uh, mental health. There's a lot, there's a lot out there and awareness that the question mm -hmm. of how can people help? Spread awareness. Let people know we exist. Like Austin said, very likely everyone knows at least one musician. Yeah. Tell them, right? You know, th they might want the help, they might not, but just tell them. And, you know, it comes down to the second bit, which is there's a lot here in Austin, but I feel like what may be lacking, and this is, I don't think any one person's fault or one entity's fault, but it's just the, the synchronicity. It doesn't seem like every entity is working very tightly together. It's like, it's like everything's kind of scattered. Everything's yeah. there, but there's like no hub right right and i'm not saying we're going to revolutionize the whole city and, and, and create this crazy thing but one of one of my personal dreams is i want to help make sure that that community is more apparent you know and, and really make it to where people do realize oh cool i'm in austin i'm a musician or i want to support musicians there is this ecosystem here and everyone talks to each other and everyone helps each other because at the end of the day if i do one thing and you do another if we see each other as competitors we both lose True. You know, and, and so does the, the artist who would be our, our main client or, or the person where they're helping. When we work together and we're referring people to each other and we're supporting each other, that's community. People care about each other. It feels better. You have each other's backs. If you fall, you fall a lot less lower than you would yeah. by yourself. Um, and, and again, you know, it just keeps that ecosystem, that economy stronger. You know, people want to go to that coffee shop or this bar or this whatever if they know that everyone's kind of helping and supporting each other nothing beats community man because then they have buy-in right like that's the one thing that i've really tried to explain to people you know mm -hmm. i have it started with chris and i in 20 late 2014 is just a fun hobby cool. you know we'd invite we would literally bribe people to come over to his house with steak dinners green beans croissants and beers and is then that, it would get rowdy what's coming up after this some shit <laughs> 
beers. <laughs> uh, I was really hoping for a croissant. Yeah. yeah. I, know, I was going to say, I thought you brought the green beans with you. <laughs> <laughs> but Probably need some green beans, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. No, it's all good. But, but, you know, then we saw this shift where instead of us trying to pull people in, people mm-hmm. then started asking, hey, can we get on the podcast? And yeah. I was like, oh my God, people people actually want to come over here and hang out and chit chat and, and then just slowly it's over the fucking green beans. It's the green beans. <laughs> See, <laughs> sorry. I told you I'm talking about croissants. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of confused and a little worried that everyone's ignoring the steak here. Uh, I mean, that that's the favorite thing to me. I'm, Beer's good too. Green beans. Great, <laughs> yeah. But Hey, but yeah, I, I've, I've, you know, we've always, I've always done this as just for the community. Yeah. And I've always tried to, you know, quote unquote, employ as many people as I can, because I can know how to do everything, but I'm not going to know how to do it all perfectly. So, right. you know, whenever I was doing live streaming from come and take it, I brought on, uh, my buddy Taylor Anderson from, from band Paula, but he also runs Titan audio productions. The kid is a mm-hmm. genius when it comes to mixing music. And he took my live sound through the roof. Right. And then, you know, grabbing people in the crowd and just saying, Hey, you really like this band? Yes. All right. Here's a gimbal with a phone on it. Aim it right at that guitarist and I love that. the vocalist and just whatever you feel. Uh, and I always try to tell them if you were watching the music video or the live shot of this, mm-hmm. what would you want to see? Right. Give me that. You so, sorry, sorry. No, yeah, it was, it, but like, I would love, I mean, just, it, I don't know if it's already apparent, but I would love to be involved with you guys on some level. Um, and obviously this is the first step in the right direction, but I do think to your point, it being a community thing, mm-hmm. you never get the time back. Like, like that's what right. we're all chasing is we're all chasing how to do so much cool stuff in the short amount of time that we have on this planet. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's this, there's this negative aspect of, Oh, I've got to give up two hours and I'm not getting paid for it. Like, Right. Think to yourself how much shit you do in the day that you don't get paid for that you already have to do. Dude. And on top of that, I mean, speaking from personal experience, there's so many things I've done in my life for free or little pay that got me in this seat with you guys. Right. You know, just to sit here and have this idea, you know, to sit here and bring it to life. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad you're mentioning that because I think if there's this this mental restraint of well, time is money. And if I'm not getting paid, you know, 50 bucks an hour or 20, or whatever the hell somebody wants, you know, to go do something they should be doing anyway, to get their reps in right. like practicing guitar, let me just like do it, you know, like, and then, and then you'll get paid. Yeah. Right. But this whole idea of do it and then you'll get paid probably should be a little stronger, a little more spread out. Um, and hopefully it gets there, but you you said some things that got me thinking about the psychology of it all, the psychology of community. I think there's a lot of people that we know that care a lot, that know a lot, that do a lot, and they end up having trouble building a team, trusting a team, training a team, scaling a team, and and letting them, you know, help them get further. But that's what a community is, right? That's what a team does, is you work together and everyone has their strengths. Um... I'm going to throw in a cheesy phrase real quick, you know, that I learned when I was a teenager and it sticks with me to this day. Uh, you can go fast alone. It's fun, but you can go much further together. And I do firmly believe oh, yeah. that. Um, and that's why I'm so big on community. And that's why I'm so big on, you know, this, the nonprofit idea at the beginning, just damn near laughed me at a sushi, but I'm thrilled that we're here. I'm thrilled that we're doing this because the idea is if people have each other's backs, who's going to take you down? Yeah. Right. You know, if people have each other's backs and they're looking out for each other, what will you not be able to accomplish? Because you might not know it, but somebody else does. Oh, 100%. So talk to people like they say. Right. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. So get to know people. Take care of each other. That's all it really takes, man. And it's it's there's also, I think, a bit of pride in there where some people are like, well, I have to do it myself or I'm the best one. I'm the only oh, one man. or they're not going to do it like me or whatever. And that's fine. I get it. That's any industry. Um, but I think one thing that needs to be said here is the artist doesn't have to do everything themselves. Right. And I think that's one thing that might be, uh, overlooked. We're teaching a lot of stuff. We're getting a lot of knowledge and and we're, we're dumping it out there for people to absorb. It doesn't mean one person has to go and do everything for their band or, or for their own artistry. Like 
you might need a tour manager. You might need a booking agent. I recommend you get them, <laughs> you know, oh, and, and yeah. you know, that way you can focus on your craft. And, and it's, again, it's, it's the idea of, okay, I'm running my business. I have people on my team. We all specialize in different things. And together we're accomplishing this goal of scaling, playing in front of more people, getting more streams, selling more merchandise. Okay. Now that we're making more money, what are we going to do with it? Right. That is really, I think where we're trying to live with this thing. Yeah. I think there's, you know, uh, term that gets used that there's a big difference between working in your business and working on your business and that, Ooh, that's an entrepreneurial that's awesome. issue across the board it's if i could hit creative, my sample pad not, right now yeah. you'd get a burr, 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 burr. <laughs> you know and, and and when you're <laughs> when you're starting up it, it you're always working in your business right but a lot of creative never get out of that right and it, it's a combination of trust and having trust in people and it, it, the other parts of the education on knowing enough to manage those people right but to, to robert's point you know you're going to grow to a point where you can't do that it's not no your time is not best spent you know working on those things anymore it's putting these other people in place but knowing enough to know who you're bringing is doing what they're supposed to do and you know that that they're going about it the right way and they're they're focusing on what your mission and vision is as an artist for your particular project and, and staying in line with that um but that's kind of where we want to go. It's like give you the skills necessary to where you can just focus on the creative, right? You can come in and you've you've hired an artist manager who knows what that vision is. And that artist manager and, and understanding that structure more importantly, going a little off topic there, but it's you know, you hire an artist manager, that artist manager should know exactly what the game plan is and have a hand in helping you develop it. But then that person goes and manages the booking agent, the PR agent, the tax person, the business manager, the banker. That that's you're you're essentially hiring a CEO to run your business at that point. That's what that artist manager is supposed to be in in business terms, ah, right? I didn't know. And that. so mm-hmm. they have a hand in everything. So that's a very key person, right? If you got to be able to trust that person, but you got to know what that person's responsible for to know that you can hold them accountable, right? So talking about this board structure, the band or the artist at some point is the board. You are going to hire a CEO. You're going to hire an executive director because you're going to have to, right? Don't do it right away. Don't expense that right away. There's a lot you can do yourself, but you will grow to a point where that's necessary. And so getting people to understand the evolution and the life cycle of what that looks like in in their business. It's almost like the flow chart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think is where we're trying to come in and and what makes us different from what's out there already. Right. And so, yeah. Well, I'm looking at all of the met, all the, all the data points here. And I I see that one camera is getting ready to take a shit. It's Ah. mine. So not really that important, but um, I do want to ask a cut. We're, we're coming up right in an hour. So okay. I think we've absolutely crushed it. Cool. Um, as far as I can see, there's no technical, technical difficulties, but I'll probably find it somewhere in post, but, <laughs> 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 but, um, last, I guess we'll just last couple questions. Um, obviously we'll, we'll get to the, the socials and like how to reach you. Um, what are, what are your short term goals in the next six to 12 months, where, where do you think you guys would and should be? Yeah. So we, we have our launch event on August 26th oh, yes. out at come and take it live. How did I not even so remember first, that piece of the puzzle? First and foremost, <laughs> the most getting, important thing, <laughs> getting this thing out into the public. Like I said, we've been building, you know, for almost the last two years on the back end, And so uh, doing things like this and, and just creating awareness, I'm going to say, you know, the next, three to six months is probably going to heavily be involved in that. Um, and then beyond that, getting our pilot program launched for our, our coaching program. Um, we're hoping to get that going before the end of the year this year too. And then 2024 really taking it full swing and, and trying to open things up. So um, short-term goals, let people know we exist. I think that's gotcha. the biggest hill we have to climb right now is we, we are a very new concept um, in the realm of nonprofit, especially. Uh, so it's going to take us a minute to kind of let people know Hey, we exist. This is what we do. Um, and then getting the programs launched to be able to say, Hey, all this stuff we're talking about, this is, this is where we actually apply the work. And these are the tools and the resources that we do. Here's the proof. Here's the pudding. Yep. hundred percent. Stir it up. Yep. (laughs) Tasty. So August 26th, yes. come and take it live Mm -hmm. is the A&R foundation launch 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 party. Launch party. Dude, the pre-sales are where it's at. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to just Hit shamelessly it. promote Plug it. Do it now. <laughs> yeah dude okay so first the bill is dope so just to describe who's playing that night Brittany lobus is kicking everything off and she is a local artist here uh who's fantastic they she, she actually has worked uh with rob and austin previously 
And, and one of the, the reasons that she's on board is because she's able to speak to what uh, education and resources can do for your path because okay. she's currently on it, right? Uh, which is great. Uh, and then um, that was the one that was like most deliberate from like an example standpoint. But then the rest of the night is just a fucking party. So uh, forever starts today is coming back, yes. and uh, they're gonna they're gonna be playing second, uh, and then we have burning years and nominee Oof. for the rest of the night. So yeah. uh, we're, we've got a killer lineup. So it's August twenty sixth to come and take it live. Pre sales are ten bucks if you just want to get a pre sale ticket. Uh, you can go to the anrfoundation.org or is it the the links up there right? And yep. then yep. on the Instagram, uh, you can also find uh, the little the little mini link there to to jump to that, but. The pre-sales are where it's at because it's 10 bucks for a pre-sale general admission, but there's also a drink bundle. So you can buy a pre-sale ticket plus a couple of drinks. There's a deal there, but the VIP is where it's at because you get admission, drinks, and a t-shirt, uh, and that closes soon. So uh, honestly, I'm blanking on, on what we what we'd set that up as. Uh, for about the another, another week or so to, to pick those up. Mm. So, so uh, I think the price points were 10 20 and 30 so 30 yeah, bucks 30 gets you bucks, the dude. tickets drinks a couple of drinks and the t-shirt and a t-shirt uh, yeah normally you're probably looking at 50 plus for all that God damn, so, i mean yeah that's like 10 yeah. to get in 10 for the shirt and 10 for the drinks i mean one drink or one drink yeah i mean now you're, <laughs> and you're getting two you're getting two i mean that's yeah. yeah and even and even still like that shirt you know at ten dollars that's a flipping deal because mm-hmm. i mean like you're to your point earlier it's yeah. like are you selling this for cost or you know whatever yeah. i mean I still have shirts in the back of my trunk that I'm getting ready to go donate because I didn't have the right business mindset mm-hmm. whenever I went and bought them all. I bought way too many like triple XLs and you know, I've just been giving them away and I was clearing out some shit at the house the other day and I was like, dope. And I'm just going to go give them to Goodwill or something, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, but cool. But, uh, but man, so 30 bucks VIP ticket, August 26th. Um, that's, yeah. So, and that money, that money is going to go, uh, so it's more of an awareness event for us. Just, you know, uh, we wanted to have a party to talk about who we are and what we're trying to do to help. Um, but obviously any money that comes through the door is, uh, first and foremost, going to make sure our talent gets taken care of, which mm-hmm. they'll be taken care of either way. But, uh, that helps, you know, pay for the production itself, which is step one. But step two is anything remaining is going to go to fund the mission as a whole, right? Whether that's advertising dollars if we need it but i think we've got grants for a lot of that stuff already so really it's just putting it to good use on our end and hopefully one of those things is going to be things like oh well once we start building funds we can hire coaches Mm -hmm. that can come on and and just do this part-time work to help educate people right Uh, you know so uh it it is just kind of helping fund the mission and the machine so we're definitely there to have a good time uh and that's more than anything we just want people to come out so we can talk about it you know so it's not just like another show. Like, right. it, I mean, right. it, it is a show, but it's, there's purpose built behind Absolutely. it. There's not insert headliner here, no, right. lower right. bill. Yeah. And this we've got is, vendors that are coming in that are basically going to be musician services. People that are part of the music ecosystem will be there wow, representing okay. themselves. Um, if, uh, I don't know what room we've got left, but if you're somebody that might have interest, get us, you know, shout at us, but uh, either way. So, we'll, I mean, Austin, who are, who are a couple of folks that are going to be there? Yeah. So like James said, we, it's really an awareness event and, and a community event is really how I want to want to bill it, if you will, that happens to have live music that night. Right. Because gotcha. that's what we're all about. We're all about a good time and, and we got a great bill, um, but really it's to build awareness. And then, you know, on, on the musician side, we're hoping to put a lot of musicians in there, even if you're not performing, come out. Right. Because for 10 bucks at the end of the day, you're going to get obviously an awesome show. You're going to get exposure to what we do and a chance to, to, to understand how we're going to help. But more importantly, we're going to expose you to all those other resources that are there back to what Rob was saying earlier. A lot of people don't know they exist. And so uh, under pressure screen printing is going to be out there. He's, he's been local to Austin for a long time. He's got some of the lowest minimums and best priced uh, eco shirts at that. So it's all water discharge. So it's safer for the environment. Oh, cool. Okay. Great quality. And he's got really great minimums. Um, we also have, um, folks from uh hen house recording which is a great recording studio musician owned as well um and then uh, Noiseland atx which is a, a fairly new rehearsal space literally right across the street from the airport so south austin rehearsal rooms that okay. have great prices also musician owned as well um and then our friends over at peach house which is a production company that really focuses on making sure artists uh, of all types of music and traditional art 
uh, get paid fairly. And so they throw festivals throughout the year that are very targeted towards making sure that folks get paid what they deserve to get paid and create community. Um, and then we're working with a lot of the other nonprofits as well. So folks like Tala, um, Sims, those other places. And so um, we're trying to pack as many people in that room as we can to just, again, get that community conversation going, right? I think the the pandemic did a lot to keep us away from one another. Um, and not that we were perfect before that, but now it's, let's bring it all back in and let's figure out, hey, I might not be the best person. I'm definitely not the best person to talk to you about your mental health, but I got an organization that is, and they specialize in it, right? You need some help with those taxes and things like that, because that is a real thing you got to deal with. I know a little bit, but these guys specialize in it and they're nonprofit too, right? And so um, definitely I, probably the best 10 bucks you're going to spend as a musician, if for nothing else, come out, have a good time, listen to some great music, support a great cause. You know, every dollar that we make that night is going to go into getting this thing off the ground and getting us in front of people to help them go form their businesses and do great things. Yeah. I just feel like this can be one like massive homie hangout. You know, well, like I, hey. I hope so, but yeah. I, you know, I, but I want to have, you know, I want to have that conversation. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's part of it to Austin's point, like making sure that we talk about those things and that we can point people in the right direction. Like the purpose is to hang out and have a good time, but, but, to have like the sidebar you know what i mean like yeah Mm -hmm. like i want to be able to like get together and have fun as as a bonus to learning about how other people can help me as an artist be better uh and more sustainable like you know or or you know and you know everybody everybody needs a little something Mm -hmm. and uh yeah why why go do this all yourself just let's all get in a room together and let's Mm -hmm. talk about what we've got to offer and how we can help each other out well man i i'm in you know, like I, I know for a fact that just, again, this is why I love doing this is like, I had no clue about this. And now it's like, now I want to be a part of it. And, and, uh, I just, I think, I think the vision is there and I, I really like the idea of like, it's, it's like a hub at no cost because you guys have been there, you've lived it, you've seen the, you know, the damage done from like pandemic and, and, and whatnot. And then just being local here, you know, it, it's just, golly, man, I want to go on and on and on. But, uh, I think the mommies and memes are going to start hitting here pretty soon. <laughs> um, where can everybody get a hold of you, your socials, and then just any final, any final shout outs? You want to shout out the socials? The spelling, I don't, I didn't do the spelling because the, <laughs> the internet, oh, I'm just going to complain about the internet for a second, then we'll get back to your question. <laughs> A&R agency is what we're, I'm sorry, A&R foundation, we were the agency when we were for profit. I'm still trying to dump that part out of my head. The A&R foundation is who we are now. Um, and uh, because you can't use the ampersand symbol online, we had to, to make it A-N-R. We don't know anybody named Nancy to my knowledge. So there's no third person uh, that's part of our group <laughs> that, that makes up for the N. Uh, but I think it's what is it? Uh, so Instagram, it'll just be a N R. So Austin, Nancy, Robert foundation. There's no the in the Instagram one. Uh, everything else is the before it. So the a N R and I'll put, all the, I'll put all the hyperlinks Thank you. in yeah. the, yeah. in the description and in the comments. So that way people can just, you know, jump to where they need to go. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the ANR foundation.org is going to be your go-to for everything. That'll link to all the socials to get you to the ticketing link. It'll get you to our donation page. Um, you know, and folks, again, if you can't donate, spread awareness because other people can donate. Uh, if you're local coming to that show, like I said, for, for less than two cups of Starbucks coffee, yeah, you know, you're going to get all this value in a good time. Uh, I promise you it's going to be money well spent. Um, and so, yeah, it's like that. It's like that Instagram reel where, whatever's happening on the screen, but the audio clip that's being used is, uh, where the guy's like, what, what, something about sharing my shit. He, he's like, he's Uh-oh. like, why, why, uh-huh. why am I, people always ask me, why am I not famous? Like, cause you don't share my shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, <laughs> just share yeah. it. Like it's, a, yeah. it, it takes no effort. Literally you like, you might burn one calorie clicking, you right. know, click, share, click, share. Cause every time I see something come across my feed that I think mm-hmm. is either funny, topical, or that I think someone would benefit from it's going straight to the story. Uh, and then these days, everything is cross promoted natively. So whatever you share upload on Instagram or, or Facebook, those are obviously tied together. Now we have threads. Yeah. Twitter's pretty much dead. I'm sorry. X X is, uh, 
<laughs> it's still it's still a thing. I go there for more like politics and news. Um, threads is I'm I'm me being a one man band myself. I'd like I try my best, but I'm primarily on on Instagram. I mean that's I, and I see and I over the past year like that seems to be where. Mm -hmm. the majority of everything is happening is, is Instagram and, and obviously TikTok. Um, but, but man, I, I'm just, thank you guys for, you know, giving me a, an hour of your time today. Uh, I think this is very valuable, very insightful. Uh, I think that it's going to go, I think it's going to be great if, if you guys keep, keep trucking along and, and getting people involved and, and, you know, people willing to, to do the things that need to be done to help out the local community as a whole, then there's, there's no way, there's no way that we can fail outside of nuclear explosion. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thank you very much. Any final shout outs, any personal shout outs, any last, any save rounds? No, I mean, just thank you for giving us the time and, and oh, big you know, agency to, to talk because, Robert and I, we, we like to do that as we can thank, all tell. Thank you, thank you to the uh, field house. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my former employer and I believe, uh, I'll edit that out. <laughs> I'm here to say my part time. So it's yeah, like, yeah. So, but, um, but no, I mean this, this space is something when I first saw it, I was just like, oh my God, this is, this is perfect. Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to have some issue with the, with the background music, but I mean, it's, it's, it's all editable. Um, but the thing that I love the most about it is, is the hardcore band riser back there, dude, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's perfect. It just, it just <laughs> has like, the this, launch here, man. like, I don't know. I, I, that was the first thing that got me in here. I was like, dude, look at that. Look at that drum riser. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, thank you very much. Thank you. Field house. Yeah. Thank you. Come and take it. Texas metal collective, a and R found a uh, foundation. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be great. So thank you. Uh, Thanks, Ryan. Here's Appreciate to the future. Here's yeah, the man. Future. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Cool. That was fun. <laughs>